Lizards. Men. Men. Lizard men. For too long, lizards have been the punchline of every joke, but no longer. Today, we will try to take over this map and make it a Jurassic World. That is, if we don't get colonized by the massive British Empire before we can make it happen. We start off in enemy territory surrounded by filthy, 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 filthy warm bloods. With an army of fragile reptiles led by the most powerful frog from the Wally ship, we march towards our first enemy. The invading Ohioans disguised as people <laughs> from the fictitious region of Scandinavia. Luckily, defeating them was very easy because it's supposed to be, and we were able to quickly move on to fighting the Where's Waldo faction. They did not stand a chance, and to be honest, neither did we, but somehow we won. And after three more battles, we wiped the floor with their units and cleaned their civilization off off the map as efficiently as a bounty paper towel that's three times more efficient than competing brands. Our empire was expanding, but the rat faction Clan Gnaw still existed to the north, and this bothered me greatly. So I scooted up there and made them on this dust. Booyah! And as long as I was in the neighborhood, I conferred with Sildra Tor about what they would think of their faction being completely demolished, and taking their land was too easy. But then I noticed a boat off the coast, then at our port. But this is no issue. We'll just go and retake. I'm gonna do it! But I couldn't do it. We were just a weak army of insurance agents. Instead, we took the hit and accepted that as Americans, it's our civic duty to be in debt until we find a much smaller and resource-rich nation that we can invade. So we began traveling south, solving many very difficult puzzles using critical analysis, heavy thinking, and then flicking my mouse over all the options and choosing at random. Once we reached the Blue Vipers, you can imagine my surprise when I discovered they were actually green orcs. A shock that was only superseded by the audacity of Salastra Dyrfin, who decided to steal a territory from me one turn before I was going to take it. So we declared war, invaded her land, destroyed her faction, and demanded an apology. Except we didn't get an apology because they were all dead. Anyways, once that was done, we continued invading the Cobra Kai to make our power number go up, because if you ain't first, you're last. After spending too many turns running to the destination, we reached the final Blue Viper land, which garrisoned the distinguished warrior and philosopher General Bootlicka. He definitely lived up to his name. With a world that needed conquering, there was always more land to take. And as I trudged home, I spotted the Simp Queen attacking the Cult of Pleasure. We once again have a purpose. We will help a lady eradicate their culture. Simp Queen and Simp Prince, do? like Ronald and McDonald, Chuck and Cheese, a two-piece conquering combo for the ages. Update. Yeah, as soon as I got near her, she took her army and ran as far away as she humanly could. And now the Cult of Pleasure got confederated by the... Nope, I'm not gonna say that one. So I quickly deployed Mazda Mundi and Fickrick into action to trap their army and force them into this dark alley where people do unquestionable things, like having opinions that are different from mine. This was a perfect situation because we could now take their city and get the Sword of Cain all in one convenient battle. A convenient battle in which we tried out the new soul-powered Bastardons which shoot balls of green energy at our opponents then launch them into... The pit. Of course, we won that siege, and after that, we invaded and eradicated many more territories using punching crocs and stomping dinos to clear the path to the Druki in the north. I did not invade the Bone Boys, though. Instead, I chose to sail around them to get to the Druchi, because we are only hunting warm bloods. And after doing some brief research, I discovered skeletons have no bloods. When we finally reached the Druchi, Druki shores, the purple folk couldn't stop the flow of <laughs> and we took down army after army and land after land land. Then we reached their final major territory, Hag Grace. This was a frame-shattering and earth-rattling siege at which the dinos showed no mercy. And if that wasn't enough, after that siege, the Canadian Chaos Crusaders put the final blow on any territories in the snow, bringing Nagaron to an all-time low, and it was the end of the show because this... Ho, ho, ho decided to start a new challenge to the south. There's just one issue. We don't have any armies in the bottom half of the map. They're all occupied with Crack Shack renovation in the north. So instead, we are going to interrupt Gorok's nap time and assimilate his culture to get his conveniently located mediocre armies. But would his armies be enough to wipe out the Hunt's Marshmallows expedition? Of course it would be. They're not very good. Very soon after, they were begging for peace, but... I'm not. I'm just a messenger. And the message I had for them was very clear. If you aren't a lizardman in the south, then you aren't going to at all. And here comes the enforcers of this new law right now. They're genetically superior to the lizards in every way. All they want is peace. A piece of everyone's hand. The dinos cut through the south like butter and every battle became infinitely easier. Even when the woke pirates tried to fight us with a crab doomstack on a piece of land that spread both of our armies very far apart, the dinos reigned supreme over their crusading crustaceans. I became a father to the dinos, and they were my deranged, scaly children. And when I accidentally lit our dreads 
Saurian died during a siege, a part of me went with them. At this point, war was like getting a Big Mac. People would ask me to join and I would deliver. By turn whatever, the British were spreading like wildfire through their continent, using the UN to turn uncooperative nations into piles of rubble and ash. But two can play at that game. I may be a part of the UN now, but I won't be for much longer. So I brought armies from across the globe and placed them on the border of a non-UN representative. All doughy-eyed, they looked at us like friends. Then I clicked the dopamine switch and turned them from a regular tribe into international criminals of war. We crossed over their border and invaded them with our special boys and stegos that fire 50 50 caliber bullets that wipe out entire blood lo bone lines with one strike. Their territories fell one after another and their bones were sufficiently rattled. Around turn 227 they offered peace, but I knew the UN would never accept peace. So I respectively declined and they marched 3,000 troops up to my 20 dinos led by the distinguished Gorok. Three turns later they perished along with the red dudes, the wood elves, and the illuminati. All our dino boys doing, and I don't regret what I did, in fact I'm, I'm, I'm itching to do it again. By turn 249, every last non-UN member was gone, and a cold war began. So we took the hammer and sickle to our economy. We cut our dinos' wages, we doubled their working hours, and began absorbing the sun's power. For 50 turns, our government hoarded the wealth, then piled all of it into dino doomstacks. Now sail east, my reptiles. The civil war starts now. In order to destroy the Empire, we must destroy their third greatest ally. So I abused their open borders and parked our armies on their armies. On turn 325, I filed divorce paperwork to separate from Etine, and I was very disappointed to find out that the lizards chose to live with their mother. We started the war by attacking Lothern with four dino doomsticks, but the battle was so easy I flipped on Barnyard and watched it again, then came back to find out that the battle had won itself. Following that, we toppled their settlements with our oddly named armies, spending way too much time in manual battle because auto resolve is a fan of big oil and needs my dinos to die to make fossil fuels eight turns later we reduced the e-time to only two territories one turn later ulthwan was completely ours Etine had a few territories not on Ulth 1, but to summarize it in a sentence, the Colonials colonized the unreasonable High Elves. And in the end, it all came down to Alari. Oh wait, nope, she's dead. With one issue solved, I took aim at the traitorous Lizardmen to the south. Their armies were weak, God was angry, and their lands were mine in a matter of turns. The last remaining traitor was the Purple Probably Frog with the, the chair. Out of respect for a farmer ally, I let him 1v1 my Carnosaur. Purple Frog took the first move, casting his spell on the complete wrong enemy. Then he approached our challenger. He booped him. Then he picked him up and slammed 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 him. Then with his biceps burning, exhausted from the most exercise he's ever done, he handed us the dub. Now it was on to the fellowship of stunted growth that is mildly miffed with me. They were fast and they threw locks at our heads, but they were not fast enough. It was time to execute our vision of a better world, a Jurassic world, a world where the Empire is no longer in the French surrender. So once again we set sail and started taking their land before their overwhelming forces started rushing down through the jungles to attack us. I braced for the impact of their forces when I heard a large object cutting through the air. Praise be, the Lord is here to save-